Hey, this is Wileen Benson, and you are on the Daily Gratitude Call, where we start every day in gratitude. Gratitude is the highest energy state that we can be in. It creates a frequency of positive vibration that attracts positive experiences into our lives. Hey everybody, this is Wileen Benson. This is our daily gratitude call. Thank you for joining our call today. I'm looking forward to what we get to discover today. We've got um, some really awesome people here alive and want to thank you for being here. And also those who are listening on the podcast, thank you for joining us. Um, our calls this week have been totally amazing and super uplifting. And I, I have no doubt that today is going to be another one of those days. So thank you for joining us. And Looking forward to what we get to discover. Um, I have my timer set for 90 seconds and we're going to do a private silent meditation on gratitude for radiance of the soul, gratitude for radiance of the soul. And uh, we'll see what we get to discover. So just listen for any inspiration that's coming to you during this 90 second private silent meditation on gratitude for radiance of the soul, and um, then we'll share. Begin. All right. A couple things came to me, um, just that spirit and body connection. There's this energy that, um, I think each one of us have. I remember, um, I, uh, used to do events once a month and, um, help put on events once a month. And sometimes I would just be standing in the back of the room and somebody would come over and just like stand shoulder to shoulder to me and just kind of like rub up against me and say, I just want to be in your energy. And, um, and I had that happen more than once, you know, with different people and it wasn't it. it so there, there must've been definitely a radiance, you know, an energy that was being put off that attracted people to want to be in my energy. And I just, um, I was thinking about my girls. Um, I have three daughters and they're all very similar in height and similar in like body type and hair color. Um, I have one that's got blonde hair, one that's got uh, dark brown hair and one that has more medium brown hair. But the, the one that's blonde has dark brown hair now. She's colored her hair dark. And so I see them from the back or I perceive them, you know, just a little behind me or whatever. And sometimes I have a hard time knowing who's who, <laughs> if I'm not, you know, like paying attention because their energetic, um, radiance is very similar, but I have noticed that as they've been apart more, you know, as they've gone to their own homes and, um, you know, been in, started building their own lives separate from, you know, being sisters in the same home, that their energetic footprint has changed slightly. And, uh, so it's a little bit easier to kind of like tell them apart, you know, if I'm not like totally focused on them. Um, so that was kind of interesting to notice. 
And I also realized that um, two other things. One is that I can, because of this radiance, I can reach people even without speaking to them or without being in their physical presence. And um, I think that prayer has, um, there's, you know, this radiance of the soul. Um, prayer is an example of that, of, um, or asking, you know, for angels to surround someone or, or the Holy Spirit to, to um, you know, cast its loving light upon a person or something. I feel like we have that ability to be able to um, project our, that radiance out and also ask God to bring that radiance, you know, his radiance and the spirit of the, um, uh, upon me and upon other people. And then the final thing that I wanted to share was about um, ties, the, the radiance of the soul, these kind of soul connections that we have, um, that there are sometimes um, callings that we have at a certain time in our life and, uh, or for a certain capacity. And once that calling has ended, it's like those ties, that radiance, you know, we still have our rate, like my radiance is still happening and the other person's radiance is still happening or the team's radiance is still happening. But for some reason, they're just not on the same wavelength anymore or something that that tie is kind of cut. Um, I think about like a client, you know, that I've had where there's this energetic connection contract that we have with each other energetic contract that we have with each other. And then when that contract is ended, it's, um, you know, definitely I wish that person well, but if there's no, you know, energetic contract that's still created there, that um, my radiance and their radiance becomes, it's, it's directed in a different direction or something. So anyway, those are some of the thoughts that I had. Uh, Colleen. I was thinking about actually when you talk about being fired from a job that you were doing well, mm -hmm. and so you had a lot of confidence in yourself. And when they told you, you know, you could identify um, that they just needed to justify their approach, and maybe it was their own ambitions that that told them to, to get rid of you. But sometimes I think that when we get reproofed or when we get um, that radiance that we, we normally have, even with how we feel towards others can be dimmed a little bit just because we get mm -hmm. that, um, that reproof and we, um, we need to ask ourselves, is this something that helps me become closer to God? And if so, how can I, how can I radiate and become better? It, no matter how it's given to you, whether it's with harshness because of the lack that people feel and just really recognizing the energy that it comes to you at and saying, I don't need the energy. I just need to know if this is something I need to focus on and really prove me now, you know, my mm -hmm. scripture was today was on Malachi, prove me now here with, we're supposed to prove the Lord and he's proofing us. It's not a test. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to elder Bednar's talk on, you know, how, how, um, we need to evaluate and see the energy, see the, see the connection, see our radiance, see, see how, brightly we shine because we are willing to take information no matter the form it comes at us in but actually to prove ourselves being loyal to god and and being you know connecting with that loving energy that we are enough rather than what mm -hmm. other people's energy might be saying i don't so, I, I know you you're I'm, I'm going to bring it all together. I'm going to bring it all home, Colleen, because you. <laughs> you've given some really great insights here. So first of all, I love that idea of um, the lessons, you know, and the, the proving. Um, my scripture actually had the word reproof in it as well in my daily GPS this morning. He, uh, this is Proverbs 10, 17. Um, and if you want to post yours uh, on the Breakthrough with Gratitude group, that would be awesome, Colleen. Um, so mine is, uh, he is in the way of life that keepeth instruction, but he that refuseth reproof erreth. And, um, so basically what's that saying is that we're all going to need 
instruction. You know, we all need reproof at times. Um, and, and when I saw this word reproof, I thought of um, bread dough. You prove it, that means it rises and then you punch it down and let it rise again. And so when you think about reproving something, it's, you, it's been punched down. It rose and then it was punched down and now it's rising again. So um, the, again, it says, he that re refuseth reproof erreth. So it's like, if you think that you're going to get it right the first time and not accept any instruction, then um, you're not in the way of life. That's the first part of the scripture. He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction. So um, yeah, I love uh, what you're saying that um, to keep that radiance of the soul bright, allow reproof, allow instruction, allow ourselves to um, make mistakes, you know, and need to try again. And the lessons that we learn along the way, instead of, um, you know, letting our radiance be dimmed, that self-worth kind of drawing in within ourselves, because we had somebody, you know, your example, when I um, was fired from a job that I thought I was doing really well at, that I was giving my whole heart and soul to, um, fired from it, it's like, what? But the lesson is never, I'm not good enough. I'm not enough. There is a lesson, there is some instruction, there is some, uh, you know, and, and what I didn't realize was I didn't belong there. The, my radiance was not received there. And sometimes we can radiate and be, you know, get, be all in, in a place. And sometimes our radiance is not resonating with that particular area. And it is time to move on. Colleen, and it did is, you have something else? I just wanted to say that it is really, what is our ultimate goal to become like Christ, to be proved, mm -hmm. to be willing to take on chastisement or, um, mm -hmm. or, or, and, and still rise and still come above mm -hmm. it and still be reproofed. And, and no matter how many times you get punched down to, to know that God's is a loving God and the reproof that you receive from him is just to help you is awesome. just to help you. And that second rise, I'm, I'm a baker. And so I realized that that second rise is what brings like those air bubbles and makes it so soft and, you know, uh, bread so soft and uh gentle you know and just that wonderful melt in your mouth texture and and if you do it too much that bread can become can sour yeah i, I yeah. make sourdough so yeah mm -hmm. yeah so just enough <laughs> thank you betsy so um the radiance of the soul, I mean, it really ties into what we were talking about yesterday with the, our true colors and, and that beautiful light. Although I actually went to uh, what Wileen and I talked about before the recording started, that I am grateful for the story of Rudolph and that uh, initially he was born different and was ashamed and tried to hide who he was and really tried to hide his light. And he was just such a good soul and a good friend and had so much kindness and gathered uh, people around him who tried to encourage him. And he just had so many acts of beauty. And ultimately, he was recognized and he was used in the exact perfect place for his own individual radiance. And um, it brought me to a memory that <laughs> really touches my heart and um I was told by one of my doctors, this was during my cancer journey that was multiple years, and I was told by one of my doctors that he just couldn't do anything else for me, and I prayed about it, and I was inspired to go seek out the experts at Mayo Clinic, and I had left all my records, and it was my, um, I kind of just laid out my status of everything where I'm at, what's happened these past years, all the surgeries. And I was really anxious <laughs> at the appointment to find out, can they help me? Can they do anything? Can they fix me? Um, and I walked into, I was heading into the appointment and um, the double doors for this, um, it's a big facility in Arizona. 
And out walks a man and his wife. At the time, I was just about to reach the door. And the man stops and waits for me about, you know, 10 strides and holds the door for me and does everything in his power to smile. And you see, it was so beautiful because this man was totally burned. And he was probably very scary to people and could really be quite ugly because his whole face was gone and his ears were gone and um, it probably was even uncomfortable for him to stretch that skin and try to smile but he smiled and he smiled with his eyes and that was about the most beautiful soul I think I've ever experienced um, radiating from his inside and he, uh, he was probably that way most of his life. <laughs> and um, he stopped and, and expressed a kindness. And his bravery and him being there gave me great strength that I could overcome anything, <laughs> certainly, that I was facing. And even though everybody at Mayo Clinic, it's kind of a big deal. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but he helped me understand that certainly if he could do that, I could do it, um, whatever I was, was going. And so he radiated from his divine soul, um, within God's light truly. And in his burned face, I truly saw the Lord's countenance. I truly saw that beautiful light and the eyes and the loving and the kindness and the caring. And, and he, um, he just thought that beautiful expression. And we really are all of the highest worth in God's sight and um, beautiful radiance with that story. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Betsy. I appreciate you sharing that story. And just really a confirmation of the soul. If a person is living, there is a spirit within and um, you know, your spirit and your body and um, everything about you coming together in um, that um, communication that happens without even words, but you know, sometimes words and sometimes a gesture like holding a door for, for someone or whatever, um, but wow, how beautiful. That's, that's all part of your soul, isn't it? Part of that radiance that comes across. Thank you. Beautiful story. Any other thoughts before we shift over to our permission process? Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, let's go ahead and just take a deep breath. And as Betsy has shared, it does feel like this is just definitely a continuation of yesterday's call. Um, I remember the name, what we talked about yesterday. Prisms. Yes. <laughs> Prisms. Wow. Um, definitely a continuation. Um, so go ahead and take a deep breath and just remember, go back to that vision that you had yesterday of you and your pure self as the light of God and Christ comes into you and just brightens um, the spirit within you, all the colors and everything, the brilliance that is within you that already exists there. And just go ahead and take another deep breath and um, maybe take a look inside. This is like a, the most powerful flashlight um, shining into all the dark corners. It's like going into a storage room that you haven't gone into for a while and um, just seeing what's there. And just take this bright, strong flashlight and look around at all of the things within. And maybe there's some areas where there's some cobwebs that have not been touched for a long time. Maybe there are some old um, beliefs or decisions about yourself, um, things that you have taken on as your identity 
that are lying there kind of hidden under a, a blanket of shame. But just take the time right now and go through and find um, and look at everything. And maybe there are some brilliant diamonds of uh, gems that you have been collecting of um, wonder and accomplishment and beauty, gratitude, lots of those. But maybe there are some other things that you have forgotten that were even here that you haven't looked at for years or decades. And this is an opportunity right now to uncover them all, to shine the light. And those things that are brilliant, just take a moment, shine them up, and know that these are serving and see what those gems or those um, beautiful, shiny, bright objects represent. What parts of you do they represent that help to increase the radiance of your soul? And then also as you're noticing some of these parts of you that are not quite shining as brightly as they could, maybe there's some things that you have hidden away, tucked away because you received some feedback about them that is um, that caused some caused you to withdraw, caused your light to be dimmed. And this is an opportunity right now to listen for some of those limiting beliefs that might be coming up, write those down, and then take your wonderful golden cloth or whatever it is that you're shining these these things up with and just shine them up until they gleam, until they are clear, completely clear and transparent that the light can totally shine through them, that heaven's light can be magnified like a magnifying glass or like a kerosene lamp when you put the chimney over it, that it brightens the light. That shiny, clean, pure part of your spirit, of your soul that will magnify God's light, heaven's light, Christ's light. And just go ahead and continue your task of just going from corner to corner, place to place, uncovering, shining up, and just writing down all the things that you're learning, all the things that you're seeing. And let's stack all of those items that don't seem to be fit, that don't seem to fit inside of you, that um, no matter how much you shined this, it just wouldn't take shine. That maybe these things are just don't belong. And just like I was fired from a job where I didn't belong, maybe it's time to fire these to take them to the incinerator and fire them in a way that will just totally um, reduce them to something that can be blown away by the wind or dumped into a dustpan or spread across the ocean for um, to become soil in the bottom of the ocean, whatever would be a perfect um, resting place for these things that no longer serve you. And just go ahead and have your own experience right now of taking those things that don't belong and turning them into a beautiful something that can be part of God's amazing multiplying and replenishing system. And any of the limiting beliefs that you have written down, this is an opportunity right now to take a look at those and decide, do you wanna keep those limiting beliefs or do they belong with these other things that, are, uh, that don't serve you? And um, give yourself permission right now to let go of those limiting beliefs that no longer serve you. And, um, and you can give yourself permission to do that by saying yes. 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 Awesome. And so go ahead and add that to the pile. 
and take them, take all of those things that no longer serve. And with gentleness and love and gratitude, because they were serving you at one time or else they wouldn't be there, but now they're no longer serving. And so just with gratitude, letting those things go in whatever way feels right for you. And then once you have let those things go, let's go back to back inside with that bright flashlight and shine around one more time. Just look and see if there's anything that's left that has um, left hidden in one little corner. Just go ahead and check and make sure here everything is gone that doesn't belong there. And you've shined up everything else. And so all that remains is just these shiny bright things that are within you. And maybe there are some things that um, hadn't been used in a while, but you can see that they are useful. And so take a moment right now and uh, let's create some new beliefs about all the things that are left. What are some new beliefs that will, first of all, take the place of those old limiting beliefs and that will also empower you to be able to utilize all of the things that are left, all of these wonderful talents and gifts and and this energy, this, these parts of your soul that, that have the capability of radiating out and not only serving yourself, but also serving other people, serving your family, serving the world, serving God. What are some new beliefs that will empower you to be able to utilize these tools in ways that are, um, will just empower you to radiate your soul even more? and to bring more radiance to the world, to bring more radiance to your family. And two or three new beliefs. And then as you have those new beliefs, I invite you to um, place them, not packing them away for storage, but placing them in exactly the perfect place so that they are easily accessible in this place within your soul and that um, put some sort of um, trigger or something next to them so that in the perfect time when they're needed, that they will easily be able to come up to the surface, be able to come to your remembrance and be used perfectly. And just set that intention that everything is there within you is um, in a perfect place and perfectly um, spaced out and uh, aligned so that when they are needed, they are easily accessible. And the, the space that has been created because you've let go of all the things that were dusty and didn't really need to be there, that there's so much space and you can easily see every single thing. They're labeled with <laughs> alphabetically or whatever. So it's just like easily found all the things that are left are just easy, easily accessible and usable at your fingertips whenever you need them. Check in, see if there are any more new beliefs that you get to create. And then final question, what is the one most important thing that you could do today? What's your inspired shortcut now that you have cleared your soul and it's just radiating, shiny bright, ready to act whenever you need it. What is the one most important thing for you to do today? And just listen for inspiration to guide you, to give you that inspired shortcut. One more deep breath. And in a moment, we'll be coming back to the present and I'll open it up for a couple of shares. And so just expressing gratitude, just being in that place of um, just clean, pure radiance and know that you can return there anytime, daily even, to check and make sure that everything is shined up and ready for action, ready to be used. And go ahead and come back to the present. And if there's anyone that feels like they need some extra support in this area, I would love to have a 15 minute conversation with you. All you have to do is go to askwileen.com. I know I have some appointments available in early January 
that first week in January and love to have that conversation with you. And uh, what a perfect time to start the year with a shiny bright soul who has something that they would like to share. Um, Brittany says, love you guys. Have a perfect, have a perfect, Lizzie, you are perfect, radiant children of God. Thank you. Um, Betsy. So I found it so interesting when you were talking about, you know, shining the light within and then finding kind of all of these different globes. I went to a place because I love Christmas lights and I just, I, I, it's, there's so much beauty and, and so it was almost like I was walking through this um, beautiful garden um, I lived in Arizona, and so I would go to the um, Mesa, Arizona Temple Lights, and it was just this fairyland of lights and just like beautiful. And it was like these crystals, prisms were hanging down, and they were beautifully carved and beautifully reflecting all different lights. Um, but like each one had different lights. So as you were talking about, you know, which ones were shining brightly and glowing. So there would be a purple one or a blue one or a green one and, and all these different uh, choices around me, but just this beautiful vibrant of these hanging prisms, like more beautiful than anything. Like I was just walking through this wonderland and then it just warmed my heart that this wonderland was within me and within each one of us of we have these amazing, beautiful uh, lights and it comes down to choice. Are we going to choose to, you know, grab that vibrant purple one or are we looking at that dark one because it's not lit and we're messing around with that light and trying to find the bulb and the whole strand goes out and, you know, where's our mm. energy going on that and and just letting those go. And so the act of letting them, you know, all the dark ones, all the dim ones leaving your body and standing in your beautiful own fairyland of truly the divine within. Um, and so that was just like, that was just such a beautiful vision um, to allow me to, to grow and stand taller from my spirit. Well, so beautiful. I just could envision that as you were talking, Betsy. And I just thought of like a fairy garden, you know, like a meditation garden, just walking through and having the sun hitting these prisms. And wow, what a beautiful, bright, um, soul uplifting vision. Thank you. Um, Colleen. I, I don't, you know, as she was talking, I was thinking about an old, old movie where this little girl came into this old codger's house and took apart a chandelier and hung up all of the prisons around the room around the windows oh. so that they could I, do you remember what I movie do remember that I don't remember what the movie was but I do re recall that go ahead and I I think about the prisms that I've seen the ones that are concentrated in the temple and just letting your light shine wherever you are but actually going out and and reaching out to other people and really trying to um to go where it honors you because it looks like we lost and oh, just we and, but just go ahead and letting that go and letting all of the energy and the any fear or any resistance that you have and just know that the, the lord has a perfect place for you to be and that you just I mean, as you were going through the visualization, just to let, let all of the anxiety, like when I, when I listen to you on the call, I sit there, I could never do this because my mind catches hold of a thought and all of a sudden I'm lost in it and I can't concentrate on what they're saying sometimes. And you, you always see, seem to be so in tune and so ready to, but, but I do have light and I do have, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I would love to do this. I would love to, to just focus on gratitude, but you do it so well. And I appreciate how you do it. And it doesn't dim anything that I have. And it just is such a, a grateful part of my life to be a part of yours, just this little part. Thank you, Colleen. And you do, I mean, you bring such a, a beautiful part to our calls and um, you spark things, you know, thinking about like that radiance, the spark, you spark things. And um, 
and and we edify each other. That's that's all part of you know this gratitude call. And when two or more are gathered in God's name, we're edifying each other, and He's there to be able to help us feel, you know, your radiance and my radiance mixed together, and and we feel each other. And it's such a beautiful um, combination. <laughs> oh, Pollyanna, was that the movie, Colleen? Betsy says, was it Pollyanna? Well, that's what I was thinking. And then I thought, and I don't know. It might be. It could yeah. be. It'll be interesting. I remember that was uh, Shirley Temple, right? That was an old one. No, I, I thought it was, uh, oh gosh, I, I'll have to look through. You'll have to look. And post it might be Heidi. Picture. That uh, when you Maybe. said Shirley. Yeah. Pollyanna was Haley Mills. Oh, and um, yeah, so there's a little video that's called Pollyanna dash refracted light. Um, okay, perfect. Super cute. Yeah. Okay. So I haven't seen that version. The one I saw had Shirley Temple in it. That was older, but yeah, that would be great. If you could post that Betsy, that would be awesome. I loved um, what Colleen was saying, the kind of the analogy of taking the chandelier apart. And it doesn't mean like taking our soul apart, but it's that radiance, you know, sending our soul out to, um, you know, a, a piece of my soul exists in the gratitude call and a piece of my soul exists in the architecture of life. And the piece of my soul exists, you know, at church and, you know, all the different places that I have left my footprint where, where I've gone and I've, I've shared and radiated my soul there's a piece of that, you know, I've had um, a couple of people reach out to me and say, I really miss getting together at church in our um, women's relief society meetings, because I loved the, I always love the comments that you make. And so it's like, I've left a piece of my radiance in um, they, that they associate with that meeting. And so wherever we go, we have the opportunity to um, leave a piece of our radiance and, um, yeah. Awesome. Um, Betsy says, um, taking apart and enjoying the one single prism and its glory. Yes. There's like this radiance that happens, like, like the fullness of me, the oneness, you know, that I have when I have the light of Christ within me, there's that. And then the, the individual single people that we connect with that beautiful, um, brilliance and love that they feel when we you know, come together with one person individually too. Ah, oh, thank you so much. This has just been an awesome call. I appreciate everything that has been shared. Um, we will look forward to being back together tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. And uh, thank you again so much for being here. Love you guys. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Love you. Hey, thanks so much for listening. And I encourage you to tune in every day to the Daily Gratitude Call. And the Daily Gratitude Call happens live every weekday morning. I'd love to have you join. So to find out how to join live, go to my website, wileenbenson.com. Thanks for tuning in.